I don't even know how this happened. I, I knew that at the time I was really motivated by uh, watching uh, people cover uh, classic rock uh, on YouTube. And, uh, and I thought, okay, this is a challenge for me. I didn't plan for anything. So that's why it was a, it's, I'm really grateful. And it was a big surprise uh, that it led me here. As long as it's working now, that's all that matters. And I, yeah. uh, again, appreciate your time. Um, my name is Adam, and this is about you and your journey in music. And we'll talk about uh, the new album coming out. Yeah, I please you. <laughs> amazing, amazing. You are a phenomenal guitar player and, um, and vocalist, I must say. Thank um, you. And, and banjo player and slide guitar. I was watching your video of the Elton John cover you did. Mm -hmm. It was blew my mind. So good. Thank you. I like rearranging uh, classic uh, rock songs or yeah, classics. Uh, at my, you know, in my style, make something different because there's nothing to do with the Rocket Man. In the same style, you cannot do better than what's been done. So I wanted to try different things. Oh, well, you did a hell of a job. It sounds amazing. Thank you. Sure. Um, so again, this is about you and your journey in music. Where were you born and raised? Uh, I'm I'm French. I was um, I, I was born in Paris and always lived uh, in France near Paris. Okay. And tell me about, I'm from uh, the United States, obviously. Um, yeah, I don't know I much about, <laughs> I don't know much about Paris. I would love to hear a little bit about what it was like growing up there. Yeah, it's a beautiful city. So I, I was born in Paris, but never really lived in the city, in the center properly. I've always been uh, in the suburbs, not so far, because uh, for me, yeah, Paris is a beautiful city, but it's too crowded for me, too expensive, uh, too stressful. I prefer sure. being in the more quiet, like quieter environment, you know? So I'm not so far, but I'm, I'm, not, I'm not in Paris. And uh, the rock, there's in France in general, the rock scene is not so big because rock is not so popular. Um, but yeah, we still manage to, uh, to, to do this, to play and to uh, uh, build a, a fan base there. So that's amazing. Yeah, there really is. I mean, I felt like I feel like rock is coming back, though. Like there was a minute where it was just kind of like declining and it was electronic really came in hard and pop. Yeah. And I have a feel I it's cool to see rock and, you know, kind of more guitar driven music is uh -huh. making a, a an yeah, uptick. I, again. I think now the vintage the old school music is a is a trend again. But I even though I'm sure there's a new generation and a new scene for this. I don't think it can be uh, as big as what we had before, you know, like filling stadiums with the, the stones with ACDC. I yeah. think it's, it's sad, but I think that this era is over, but maybe I'm wrong. Uh, maybe I'm going to be proven wrong in a few years, but uh, at, at least there's a scene for this and a new generation rocking really hard. And that's a big motivation and gives me hope for the future. For sure. Do you come from a musical household? I mean, your, your style and, it looks like your taste in music is very 70s oriented. Mm -hmm. I mean, just with some of the just vibing and your T-shirts that you, you wear in your videos and like stuff like that. Like, um, were you did you grow up on classic rock? Uh, kind of. My, my parents uh, weren't musicians, not really any musicians in my family. Uh, so I didn't think about playing guitar really at an early age this was not really uh i was more into sports and playing tennis and things like this but um even though i didn't have any musicians in my family my parents are big music lovers so i had the chance to have a, a good uh, musical education uh, really ri rich and um and yeah that got me into rock and roll i guess country rock and um and yeah at around 14 i i i thought i I wanted to try the guitar because uh, all I could hear was uh, Mark Knopfler playing Dire Straits and Slash. And I was, I don't know, I, I could feel that uh, there was some kind of attraction and uh, I wanted to try. So I started with acoustic guitar for a few month, but months, but then I quickly realized that uh, I was meant for electric guitar. That's what was really motivating me and attracting me. Okay. So you, but you did start on the acoustic guitar. Was that a guitar that you got from your parents like how do you get this first guitar because there's I'm sure there's probably a pretty cool story there about it yeah yeah so my first um when it, it I think it uh, came a bit out of nowhere when I told my mom I want to start learning guitar 
So everybody was a bit caught off guard. And okay. um, we, I just used what uh, they could give me just to practice and to be able, I don't know, to touch a guitar and to, to, uh, to try to learn the instrument uh, by myself. Uh, so she gave me a guitar that belonged to her daughter, so my aunt, um, that I used a classical guitar that I used for a few weeks before I had my own acoustic guitar that my grandmother bought me. Um, wow. Well, real and, quick on uh, the classical yeah. guitar, do you still have that one? Or did you give it back? No, no, I'm not really uh, sentimental, you know, when it comes to first guitars. I oh, don't really? have any of my first guitars. The the oldest. Interesting. Yeah, I don't I don't know. I I sold them to to buy uh, something else, <laughs> like another guitar. So there's there's been turnover uh, over the years. But okay. uh, yeah, no, there of course there are some guitars that I wouldn't sell for sure. But uh, with my first guitars, yeah, I, I don't have them anymore. Okay. So you get this, you get to what, use this classical guitar and did you take lessons or are you just trying to learn it on your own? Like, right yeah, I took lessons and I think it's really helpful when you're beginning and you don't know where to start. Um, it's really good and motivating to have a, a good teacher, but uh, you have to find the right one because sometimes I know for some people, it can be the opposite. You, you stumble upon you, you meet a uh, uh, someone that is not going to motivate you that it can really create the opposite not touching the instruments and just giving up so i was i was lucky uh, about this mm -hmm. i i found a really really good teacher and he yeah he gave me the um, the tools to uh, to to be able to uh, to to practice uh, by my own and to uh, and to evolve so uh, yeah i took lessons for the f uh, the first four years of guitars i took lessons and um and uh, and yeah, and then I decided I I thought I had enough uh, baggage to uh, continue by myself after four years of uh, practicing with a teacher. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so I, for me this is important. At least you can you can have the um, I don't know you you can really learn some uh, useful things starting with a teacher. At least motivating you and not letting you down when it's the the hardest, you know. Yeah, you can get a pay a base for what what it's what, what you're supposed to be doing and i'm sure like leaving knowing something new and being able to go home and and practice it or build off it that's probably very helpful yeah at least you have someone pushing you you know you know you have to work not to disappoint the teacher and yeah. I, I i really love this i we used to study songs that i that i loved like rock songs so it was a yeah, I, I uh, and I, I was coming ho back home and i wanted to practice again at least uh, i think that's a good uh, a good thing if you're out of the lesson and then you, you just want to pick up the guitar again i think that's a good sign because for some people i guess you just have the lesson and then you don't practice for a week you know right yeah you practice 10 minutes before the lesson yes. <laughs> and with you it sounds like now you have somebody to be accountable to not only that you enjoyed learning yeah yeah exactly so uh no no i'm really i'm really happy i i met this uh this teacher and um and yeah, I'm, now I'm, I can find the motivation by myself to, to keep on practicing and keep on learning. At the moment, I'm mostly working on my own songs, on writing and uh, composing, so it's a bit different. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I have enough tools to do this on my own now. Do you stay in contact with the first guitar teacher you had? We lost touch for a few years, and I, uh, we met again by coincidence because he was playing in a band that were playing with us uh, uh during a show and uh yeah yeah it was uh, really nice to see him after maybe 10 years of uh, wow not seeing him. yeah and, uh, he's probably yeah. so proud of you that's yeah, cool yeah he said yeah i was following this and i'm really really happy about what you're doing so yeah he's a he's a part of uh, why i'm here so no no it was really nice to meet him again very cool was uh -huh. he shocked at the genre of music you're bringing in being like hey um, i want to learn these or I'm interested in these like Zeppelin songs or whatever it may be versus going in at, just as due to your age saying, oh, I want to learn this, whatever, you know, pop artist that is popular so. at the time. OK, I don't think so, because learning electric guitar, he knows that I'm already into rock, you know, and he was also into rock, not so much older, maybe 10 years older than me. Okay. But um, but yeah, yeah, I think uh, all the teenagers that are that wants to to start the guitar there everybody's into rock so he wasn't he, he was the one offering okay do you want to learn stay away to heaven and so we went through all the classics and um okay i'm on the same page 
Wow, that's awesome. And then you got what start doing this YouTube channel because that's kind of what really started to work for you, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I so think, tell uh, me, was that like the next thing once you learn a bit of guitar? Was it okay? I should. I'm gonna just start doing these covers. Like, what? How did that happen? So I I, I don't even know how this happened. I, I knew that at the time. I was really motivated by uh, watching uh, people cover uh, classic rock uh, uh, on YouTube. And uh, and I thought, okay, this is a challenge for me. I really want to do the same. I want to get some feedback. This is uh, exciting. I'm going to start posting. But I didn't have any plan or anything in mind. And, um, and yeah, I, I saw that it was growing and people were enjoying my video. So it motivated me even more to post. And, um, and yeah, I'm... I didn't plan for anything, so that's why it was a. It's I'm really grateful, and it was a big surprise that it led me here. Mm -hmm. Was there a particular video that did really well, or did they all start doing kind of well right away? Like, was there a moment that something really hit and it just like your your channel no, spiked, or? I don't think there was a particular moment, and I never really kept track of the um, the numbers uh, precisely. But I think it was really a uh, it went like a uh, smoothly, but um, surely, <laughs> and uh, uh, went uh, yeah it went up and up, but uh, kind of growing. Each video I was posting was getting more uh, exposure and attention. Um, but I, there wasn't a particular moment. I just uh, kept uh, it just kept growing, and it, and it felt good to have uh, to to have all these people supporting me and the, the good feedback. So, uh, and at the time, I think YouTube was still uh, kind of recent. I started posting maybe in 2008 and YouTube oh, wow, was yeah. created maybe two or three years before this. So yeah, so I you're think early that's to also, the... yeah, yeah, that's why it worked. I think because uh, it's a mix of, uh, yeah, right timing, um, uh, luck and hard work and the, combina the combination of, yeah, and people, uh, really um, feeling that I wasn't doing this to uh, attract views or anything. I was just passionate about what I was doing and had, I didn't have any uh, marketing plan in mind or anything. So I think that's why it worked. Yeah. And was uh, like, at what point do you decide to start writing your own songs? Like, was there a particular moment at that? You yeah. were like, yeah, I, I like doing the covers, but let's do mm -hmm. something of my own. So I didn't really like the unknown and unexpected, unprepared. So I was really feeling comfortab comfortable just covering songs. Like I knew I could just uh, uh, copy. And uh, that was my thing for maybe seven or eight years. That's the only thing I was doing, just covering and practicing solos over and over again. So of course, I, I learned some good things thanks to this. Like, uh, but, but I think... Uh, I should have started maybe earlier writing my songs, but uh, maybe I was not ready mm -hmm. uh, because, yeah, it took time. Maybe I started writing songs seven or eight years after uh, starting playing the guitar. So it's a bit late, uh, but maybe, yeah, I was a kind of introverted. So I felt comfortable just staying uh, in my house, uh, playing in front of my webcam. And then at some point I started going out a bit and meeting musicians and playing with people. And that's a, uh, how you finally uh, see the real world and you begin to understand that, yeah, writing songs could be cool too. Mm -hmm. When you were doing these YouTube videos, were you still going to, like, were you still in high school or were you, because you, you're still fairly young, right, when you were doing that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was in high school. I started, uh, yeah, last year of high school, I think I started posting. I, I was uh, 17. So, oh, okay. Yeah. So were people seeing you on YouTube or was it something you kind of kept to yourself? Uh, you mean uh, in high school? Yeah. Uh, not a lot of people were interested in guitar. So I, uh, if uh, nobody was talking about this, I wasn't bringing up the topic. <laughs> I, I, oh, okay. I always felt a bit shy, you know, to talk about this. But sometimes mm -hmm. people were noticing, were saying, yeah, I think I saw you on YouTube. Was it you? And I said, yeah, yeah, I think it's me. So sometimes it was funny, you know, but no, if uh, nobody talked about this, I wasn't the one uh, talking about that. Gotcha. I guess nowadays it's a bit different because of how um, focused kids are on YouTube or Instagram or TikTok, yeah. like having those numbers means a lot, right? I mean, there's just like this yeah. clout to it all. 
um i, I was just kind of curious to see if people were like oh you know nowadays it's like if you have a big numbers on those social media yeah. platforms kids in school will be like oh we tag me or we blah, blah, you know trying That's to get those problem. followers up now it's the race to who has the mo more followers you know so i'm not i don't know it's kind of taking away the magic of the of the music and uh but I, I don't know. It's hard to, yeah. to talk about this because, of course, I'm, I, now we need the social media to, to live a, a rock band or a music project. I don't think it's, uh, uh, you can do it without the Internet. So, of course, now people are more involved in this. Um, but in a way, it's a bit sad to just um, count, uh, to just uh, give a value to your project in, in, project in terms of uh, numbers of followers, you know. Yeah, I know it is unfortunate. It's just something that people because it's data, right? I mean, yeah, right there. But but it could be one thing or another. Just because one song lands and and then it looks like you have X million subscribers or followers or Spotify spins. Like if it comes down to that, what you know, the longevity of something or mm -hmm. uh, can the person follow it up? It's interesting to see how you know, this, this new social media kind of driven war, like, especially in art is going to yeah, for sure. For sure. I think, yeah, of course it's helping, you know, if you use it well, uh, for sure, it's a good, a good tool. Mm -hmm. Um, so once you finished high school and you're doing the YouTube thing, like, did that kind of take over and become like your, your job, like your gig? Mm, no, 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 no. I was still not ready. I think I was still, uh, I still, uh, I was still thinking that I was going to study something more normal, something I, I did. A, I tried different studies, different like architecture, translation, a lot of things that didn't work out because I was just di ditching school and come back, coming back home to play guitar all day. <laughs> so at some <laughs> point I thought, okay, I'm just wasting years of studies. I, I should uh, maybe at least have a dip diploma to not be without anything. So I, in the end, I graduated in um, the, um, I, I got a sound a technician um, diploma. Oh. Uh, at least uh, that's related. Something to in your field, music. yeah. Yes, yes, that, that was easier to, to, um, to, to get. Um, and then once I had this, so it took several years, um, I, um, I was still working in different areas until I met my uh, manager and my label. And then things took a, a different turn. Um, that's when we started building a, a team and they thought, okay, we think you can live from your music. Do you want us to try? And I didn't think it could work, but I said yes. And still, uh, and we're doing this since, um, I, I think I've been living from my music since uh, the first album came out. So 2017, but wow. um, yeah, mostly so thanks to the tour. Uh, because on YouTube, it's really, really hard to earn money with the music. Because when I'm covering um, songs, the covers don't uh, don't belong to me. So the the rights, I cannot earn anything because the rights are not mine. And oh, when it's so you my can't, own you songs, can't monetize it. You can't monetize like your covers. No, but some some artists allow allow this if you share with them with their label or something. But it's uh yeah, in the end, it's nothing. And even my songs, because when you sign with a record label, technically they, they have half of the rights. So right. I uh, earning. I don't know how uh, musicians can earn money with YouTube. It's really tricky. So yeah, yeah, it's um for me what works. Uh, what makes me uh uh what what is um. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, like, yeah. Monetary, yeah. like lucrative. It would be like touring and playing. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. So before your first album comes out, like, so you meet your manager, does your manager find you on YouTube? Is that how you yeah. started meeting people? Okay. Yeah. 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 He contacted me through YouTube and uh, he already had some connections for touring uh, in France. So we started doing this in uh, yeah, 2017. And now we found bookers in Germany, Spain, Italy. So we, we kind of um, yeah, uh, broadened this to Europe and we are often touring within Europe. But now I can't wait to come to the US for the first time. It would be great. US and Australia, Canada, I would love to come. Do you have anything planned to come here? Uh, not yet, but okay. we're gonna- Working on it? Yeah, I'm going to look for a booker because we don't have any booker there. And uh, that's something I would really want to try maybe hopefully this year, uh, next year with the release of the album and see mm -hmm. what we can do there because I'm, I'm sure there's a, there's something to do. So I would, oh, I would for like sure. That's awesome.
So tell me about writing your, you go from doing these YouTube covers to writing your first songs of your own. Was that, uh, like, were you showing those songs right away on YouTube? Was it like testing them on YouTube before you went and recorded the album? Like, how, how did that Sometimes. work? Sometimes okay. I, I uploaded, you know, quick jams on YouTube, like uh, to, to see if, uh, how, uh, what were the reactions and, and, uh, and then it turned into a song later. So it, I did this a few times without knowing I would record this uh, later. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's a kind of, um, I don't know, it's really two different worlds. Um, I think the transition, it's not really between playing covers and writing songs. It's most, uh, the transition is the, uh, it's mostly about um, between playing in my bedroom and playing on stage. This was uh, a bit uh, frightening because uh, when I started the band, I already had millions of, view- millions of views on my YouTube channel and I mm-hmm. never played live. So I thought, okay, I'm going to give my first show, but I think people are expecting something. And I'm a bit, it was a bit, uh, I had a bit of a pressure on me because. Yeah, because uh, you already had a name, I- kind of had a name for yeah. yourself, right? And so a lot I, of people I knew who you I were. Up. yeah 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 so i didn't yeah i was a bit shy i didn't feel so comfortable the first years on stage but now of course it's better we, when we you're used to touring for a few years so um so yeah yeah this was uh, the trans transition that was a bit scary more than uh, switching to uh, covers uh, from covers to uh, original songs you know okay so yeah going out and actually having to play and knowing that people knew who you are at that point like Yes. That's yeah. <laughs> what, what was that first show like? Do you remember like before you went on stage, like the preparation yes. you had to do? Like, talk to me about yeah, that yeah. a little bit. No, I I uh, mostly remember that uh, we were really stressed, so we played all the songs double the speed. Maybe not oh, double course. the speed, yeah. but like in a rush, Fast. in a hurry to finish the show. So, and then we talked and we heard some footage about uh, what we we played, and we thought, oh. The song was were, were so fast. We were so stressed and in a hurry to get this done. So, but now it's more chill. Right, right, right. With the first shows, did people know? Like, did they show up because they knew you from YouTube? Like, was that a, a, a majority of people that were coming out? Yeah, I think the first shows, yes, because otherwise I don't know where, how, why they would have come. So, right, right. And now, now it now it depends. It could be because of. Uh, it could be YouTube. It can also be because I, this is my, I'm releasing my third album. So some of them. Right. Uh, and you've toured and you've done a lot of yeah, stuff yeah. since, it's obviously. On the road or already. Yeah. So now it's a uh, variable. It depends. After like when you come, so, you know, you put out your first album, you do your t- shows and stuff like going into that second album. Was that something um, like, did you approach it any differently or were you, you know, mm-hmm. it was it the same kind of formula. Yeah, so the fir- the first two albums were recorded kind of the same same writing process, and uh, except that yeah, the second I f- I felt a bit more comfortable in the studio. The first one I remember I was really really stressed, and I didn't like this experience. It was um I don't know, uh, but now uh I don't know. There's um the third album. It was more chill to record, uh to record. The dynamic of work was better. And I felt surrounded by a better team. I was more comfortable, and I, I, I could, I think this showed when I recorded. You know, uh, if you're comfortable, if you're confident, uh, you, people can hear this. So I think this uh, third record was, uh, yeah, recorded in a different kind of mood, and for me, it made a difference. Mm-hmm. Like, so, okay, so you're saying the, obviously the first one you're going in, you're probably pretty tense, right? You're like, oh my gosh the yep. i gotta do this it's gotta sound good but then going into the second record is it similar and uh, hopefully these songs will land again because you did uh-uh. well on the first album like is the second album going to do well did you have that thought at all or no i was more no because I, I i just wanted to record something i was uh, proud of you know and if i if i'm playing and recording music that i like i thought people are gonna like it too so i i i'm i'm i was just thinking okay i'm doing my job i'm playing the music and then selling the CDs and the albums is not really my job. I, I'm letting this to the, the stores and the Giving the it up label. to them, sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You, re- you released that second album in 2019. Was that towards the beginning of the year or? Uh, end like, of I'm the d- year. It was oh, November. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. 
So then what you put the album out and how does that affect touring? Obviously with the COVID happening, were you on the road when that all happened? Yeah, we were stopped uh, during the promotion. We So we released the, uh, the album in November, 2019. And then we toured a bit and then everything was stopped in March. So we, we yeah, um, everything came to an end uh, faster than expected. And, were you uh, actually in a different city or a different country when, when you, and you had to get sent home or how did that happen? So, uh, no. So what happened is that when they were starting to say, okay, we are closing the venues, the shows are being, being canceled. We were on our way to Germany to play a show that was sold out. And, um, and in the end, we, we um, were told when we arrived to the venue that the show would happen, but they wouldn't let the people, the people in. So we would play in an empty venue and the show would be live streamed because it was supposed to be recorded anyway. But oh, okay. they had to say they had to tell the the people, sorry, you're not going to enter. Be in the crowd, the right, right. Yeah, yeah. So in the end, we did this show, but I wasn't prepared at all. We we just heard this before the show, and I didn't really know how to react. Sure, if I if I had to talk to the people as if it, they were in front of me, if I had to talk to the camera, or if I, how would I interact? You know, how, what was the best way? So it was really a, a first uh, experience for us. It was kind of a uh, weird but nice experience it's uh yeah, how did you how did you approach it did you talk to the audience or just play yeah, yeah. the songs through no no i had to talk because uh they were saying yeah you have to last one hour and a half and i said yeah okay but if i cannot talk and play with the people you know like sing with me and things like this uh i'm not gonna last one hour and a half so yes i started talking with the people saying yeah i hope you're comfortable and, uh, <laughs> out in front of the screens but um yeah in the end it, it was fun you know it was a uh, it was a bit scary before we we started but then everything went well and i think we were one of the yeah first uh, live streams uh, in the context of the covid yeah you probably were i mean to get on it right that quickly like oh okay yeah. it's shutting down but tonight yeah. we're not canceling the show you're going to do it like this um how fat or how soon after you know lockdown and COVID and like and all that happening were you able to start working on this this album that's coming out next month? Um, so it took time because honestly, during the COVID period and the lockdowns uh, and everything, I wasn't really inspired, and I didn't want to force myself to write material if I didn't really feel it. So I let some time pass. And so it means that the songs are really fresh because uh, for the previous albums, we used to tour months uh, and playing these songs on the road before the release. But for this one, I wanted something more sp spontaneous and uh, yeah, le less prepared, more, more fresh. Um, so yeah, it took time. I went a bit to Portugal for a few months to be near the ocean and, and just uh, take my mind off music because honestly, I, with this... Um, COVID attention, I, I was unable to write anything. So I, I needed a bit of time. And in the end, all the songs came uh, together yeah, in 2021 when things were starting to, uh, uh, to open again. And, uh, but I mostly wrote uh, everything when I was away from the bandmates. Um, and then when I got back to Paris, we, we uh, got into rehearsal studio and we arranged everything together. Okay. So that's, yeah, I, I've heard a lot of people saying that, you know, right away, it's like they didn't have any, any creative, like, yeah. uh, it was like either I all had it, like, I've heard two sides of it. It's either right away, they just wanted to uh, disconnect from it all and just write, write, write. And then they had, but a lot of people were like, what is going on? You're just so kind of, it's all so uneasy that creativity was kind of hard to to. Capture. Yeah, yeah, but like you said, a lot of people released released things uh, straight away and wrote and uh, were really inspired. But I, right. I, I was uh, on the opposite mood. Sure, sure. And do you write usually by yourself and then present to your band and iron stuff out, or is that, was that it's, like a new process? Yeah, this was this time was different. So okay. and I uh, I had to say I enjoyed the freedom to do this uh, myself for once. At least I didn't do everything myself, but more than uh, than on the previous albums, and I and I I enjoyed this. And then uh, I don't know, it went all the creative process and the arrangement process went really smoothly in a good uh, work dynamic, and I was really happy with how it went the first time we tried this, and uh, everybody seemed uh, happy about this uh, method. So mm -hmm. I think I'm gonna do this again. Okay. 
Yeah, for the next one. Well, talk yeah. to me about the album a little bit. I think you have what two songs from it out thus far? Yes. Yeah. 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 One. Uh, yeah. We have one big mess that were was uh, released a few weeks ago, uh, even months ago. I'm not sure. And so long, the new so single long. that has been out for a few days, and the music video is uh, out uh, just right now today. Um, so yeah, yeah. It's. Um, I knew that for this album, I wanted um a rock album obviously but something a bit less heavy than the previous ones um mm -hmm. like a more chill atmosphere a mix of uh, what i always like you know kind of uh, sometimes you can hear a bit of the countryside i i oh yeah I, of, uh, yeah i played more banjo on this one i was gonna say i heard banjo. a lot of banjo even especially in those yeah, first yeah. two songs uh, so long has a pretty I mean, it's rocking in the beginning. It's got that bluesy mm -hmm. kind of rock riff, but then it, it, when you get into the choruses and the bigger parts, there's the banjo and there's yeah. kind of that country-ish hook to it. Yeah, exactly. Mm -mm -mm. No, I'm really happy. I wanted to include more um, uh, original instruments that maybe people are not expecting to hear in the classic rock records. So yeah, and I played lap steel too. And even if I know I'm not a great banjo or lap steel player, it was important for me to play myself uh, i know i'm gonna get better and this is a kind of a, a challenge too and so and i was glad to uh bring a different color a different texture with a new instrument so yeah this was a really fun to do this on this album do you like the the first couple songs that you've released does that have a pretty good uh does that kind of show what the rest of the record is going to look like in the sense yes. of like having more of that you know country vibe or even the, with the banjos yeah, yeah. and in the it's not a slide guitar. Would you call it a flat steel? Uh, lap steel. Yeah. Lap steel. Okay. Because yeah, you yeah, play yeah, that yeah. also in the Elton John cover, right? Yes. Yeah, I really okay. love this. I love this instrument. It's a bit, uh, I don't know, kind of in the in the same mood than the guitar, but a bit a bit different and a bit smooth smoother. I really like this. But uh, yeah, for me, it was a different approach. And um, and yeah, the 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 songs that were released so far are kind of a. Uh, representative good examples of what the what? album is going to sound like but you're going to be able to hear this pretty soon so I'm yeah excited. what is there like a particular thing on the album that you can't wait for people to to hear or something that was really special to you that happened maybe in the studio not really i'm really uh, curious about what people are going to to think and their feedback and because for now i thought okay i think this song is a bit stronger in terms of i think this song is going to be the favorite but uh, with the few interviews that I that I had already, the names of the songs that the people are, are giving me are not the ones I would expect. So it feels good because they're mostly talking about the ballads, you know, they're yeah. like soft, soft songs. But I wasn't expecting this, but yeah, it's it's nice. I love it. Well, thank you so much for taking time to to chat with me today. This has been amazing. Thanks a lot. Yeah, I have one more question for you, Laura. Before I let you go, I want to know if you have yeah. any advice for aspiring artists. If I have what, sorry? Any advice for ah. aspiring artists? Yes. So I would say try to focus on your love for the music more than the, the number of views. And uh, yeah, just try to be passionate. No, no plan in mind. And if you love what you're doing, people should notice this. So yeah, I would say focus on the, on the good things rather than uh, the strategy because I, I I got I get these questions a lot. How did you get these uh, this number of views? But this is not the right right question to ask because if you're uh, starting something, starting a career, or starting to play just with this in mind, I'm not sure it's going to work. You you're taking the magic all all of it. So so yeah, be passionate, lo love what you're doing, and then that's going to work. Hopefully. Bring me the bad word.